everybody, and welcome to episode 63 of All About African Violets. All About African Violets is musically sponsored by Ted Yoder. You can hear and purchase his great music on his website at tedyoder.com. It is also available from iTunes. Hi everybody, come on into my sunroom. It's not sunny, it's dark. It's later in the evening on Saturday night. And I'm very casual today here um, at my house. So uh, I'm, I'm so glad to be with you. I hope you guys have had a great week. It was a wonderful week here in Chicagoland. And I have to say, um, summer's over. <laughs> summer's over. And I'm, I'm kind of glad. I had a great, this is the first weekend that I've had where I could just do stuff in quite some time. I love having my friends visit me. And, you know, we just had a great time. But sometimes, you know, you just have to get other stuff done. And uh, so I spent my morning today running errands. And then I relaxed for a while. And I was knitting for a while. And and I thought, oh, I better, you know, I got a message from Kurt Jablonski. And he said, get that podcast ready. <laughs> OK, Kurt, I'm getting it ready. Here we are. Well, let's move right into tips and treasures because I got treasure in the mail this week. And it's, I got my African Violet magazine and I wanna share it with you. And there are some really important things in here this month, here it is. You see all my notes, my stickies of things I wanted to tell you guys. Um, and the first thing I wanted to tell you is that you, um, those of you who get the magazine, and I hope you all do, because that means you're a member of the ABSA, um, you will notice that um, Jenny Dojero, who has been the office manager uh, for ABSA for, my goodness, nearly 20 years, she has retired. Jenny, wish you all the best. Thank you for all your help and uh, over the years, and I hope that retirement is everything that you wish for it to be and that it will be very happy for you. We were all gonna miss you, I miss you already. And you'll see that Amy is the new office manager and uh, she's written her, her first column, so you guys will wanna check that out. And then something important, um, the shows and judges column, which is written by Bill Foster, you know, if there is a change to the handbook, to um, the judges handbook, uh, that in between publishing, it appears here in, in the magazine in the shows and judges column. And there is a change that I want to particularly point out because uh, when I was talking with Tammy last week when we had the questions on, one of the things she asked me about was plant sizes and pot sizes and things of that sort. And I had said that a standard, you know, a, a semi-miniature is from six to eight inches and that a standard then would be anything larger than eight inches. And there is a change to that. And so I want to share it with you. Um, it's, this is on page 52 of your manual. And it says, under con it, please make the following additions and or changes to your handbook. Page 52, under consideration for judging standard African violets, please add size, a standard plant should be nine or more inches in diameter, and then under condition, then under condition after plant not centered, add plant smaller than nine inches in diameter. That would make sense to you um, if you were looking in the handbook. But what that means is, uh, it needs to be um, added, that, that extra inch they've added there, um, they're adding that to take it out of the semi-miniature range completely. And I'm just looking because the next piece of this is on page 53, and under quantity of bloom, change eight inches to nine inches. And the reasoning for this change is that for several years, we have been questioned by members and spectators alike as to why there were entries in standard classes there were, that were the size of semi-miniatures or less. This change by adding an inch to the size of a small standard will take it out of the semi-miniature range. So that's just really important. So I wanted you guys to know that, um, you know, particularly for those of you who are judges, when I mean, you would have already seen that, but also if you are showing your plants, you need to know that. 
And then there is a good column, the beginner's column, Mary Schaefer um, wrote uh, called Repotting and Revitalizing Your Plants. What if I kill grandma's violet? And she's got some great photos and it's a very good article. And I, I, I recommend that you read it. Um, after I finish you know, with the magazine, I did film some repotting uh, for you this week and I'll share it with you. But this is very, very interesting and this is where she's talking about a plant that really has a big long neck or has been very, very severely neglected. But of course, you know, some of my plants get neglected, some of your plants get neglected. That's just how things go sometimes. We don't always have the time we might wish for. That's the, one of the other reasons I'm kind of glad that summer's over because now I'm going to have a little more time. And in the center, lots of photos from National. You might see some familiar faces in there. I'm in there. I'm right there. I'm in the group shop where we all had our, those purple hats on. Remember, you saw me in that hat. I'll be wearing that next year to National in my, my purple hat. <laughs> and then there's a very interesting article here. Um, and it's by Saya Baheshti. I hope I pronounced that right, Saya. And it's called Supersize Your Gisnariads, an interview with Donna Turner at the 2012 AVSA um, slash AVSC, that's the American you know, AVSA, and the Canadian African Violet Society in, at the Joint Convention in Detroit in 2012. And I'll just read you the, the, the first um, pieces of this because I think you're going to want to read the article. It's very, very interesting. As I was walking through the showroom, a beautiful apicia caught my eye. It was apicia kiwi grown in a 10-inch pot and had won best in class. The leaves were very large with a glorious velvety texture. And I noted that Donna Turner was the exhibitor and then continued down the table. Soon, I spotted another massive plant, this time a streptocarpus, a streptocarpus um, Fleischel roulette cherry. I hope I've said Fleischel correctly. Again, grown by Donna Turner. This was a variety that I had grown with some success, but mine had never come anywhere close to the beauty sitting before me. A quick glance down the table revealed even more supersized streptocarpus, all grown by Donna. I wanted to know more. Donna graciously spoke with me about her growing techniques and in her own words, here is how she grows these beautiful gaznariids. You guys are going to have to get the magazine to read the article because I know you're going to want to. It's great. And then there's a very, very interesting, um, a very cute also article here. And it's right by Russell Kirchner. And for those of you who don't, who may not have been at convention last year, Optimara, uh, Hope Camp, the Hope Camps sent Russell. He works for Optimara. Uh, he came with his girlfriend and they were, were at there. They ran the Optimara booth in the sales room, but it was their very first convention for him and for Jamie. And the, he wrote a great article called How Can I Help AVSA? And, uh, and he talks about convention next year. And it's, it's really nice. And it's, you know, it was really great to have him there and, and have Jamie there. And I think they had a great time. And uh, looking forward, you know, I think they're looking forward to many more conventions. So it's so much fun, you guys, to go to convention. I really encourage you to go, particularly next year, because it's going to be so exciting to be there and get a tour of the whole camp greenhouses and everything. It's going to be wonderful. Well, also in the magazine is a listing of the best articles of 2012, of the best articles that were in the magazine. And it's really exciting. The Publications Committee does this every year. And the, the top five were Taming Trailers by Sandy Skalski. Hi, Sandy. Don't Lose Your Crown by Pat Hancock. Location, Location, Location by Paul Kroll. Underwater Flower Arrangements by Edna Rourke. And Recognizing and Correcting Light Problems by Amy Cash Allison. Hi, Amy. And uh, so I think that's, congratulations, you guys, on having you know been named the best articles of 2012. I think that's awesome. And then I did want to, oh, the air conditioner just kicked on. It makes a lot of noise, doesn't it? <laughs> Sorry. I wanted to share this photo with you of Sweet Amy Sue. It's grown by Paula Bell. And that is a gorgeous, gorgeous trailer. Really, really beautiful. And uh, Paula also took that photo. So great photo, Paula. 
beautiful. So this is the latest edition, and if you haven't got one, I hope you get one very soon. And I hope you get one before November, um, because the cost for membership is going up to $35 a year. And you know, it's we'd all like it if, if things never cost any more, you know, if, if, it, if it always stayed the same. But I think we all know that you know, things cost more. It costs more to print things. It costs more. Paper costs more. Everything costs more. And sometimes AVSA has to raise the price, um, you know, for membership. And it's going up in November. So if you're going to join, join soon. Join right now before it really goes up. And uh, and also, you still have time to take the um, the AVSA survey, the um, Membership and Promotions Committee headed by Joyce Stork, has created an online survey. And so I've mentioned it before and I've linked to it before in the show notes and I will link to it again in case you haven't had a chance to do that yet. Because um, I do, I, I really encourage you to do it. Your, your, all of your responses will be seen and heard. And I think that's really important that you guys know that. Well, let's go. I'm going to take you down to the potting bench, and I did some repotting, and I'll take you down there because I know I've, I've heard from a lot of you that you really like it. Uh, you like seeing me actually work with my plants. It gives you a better idea of how I do things. So let's go take a look, and I'll see you on the other side. Hi everybody, I'm down here in the basement on my at my potting bench. It's looking kind of dirty because I've been working down here. And um, just in case you're wondering, this is the foot of my tripod. I couldn't adjust this any other way, but I think the light is pretty good for you to actually see what we're doing. And I mentioned last week that I was going to show you, um, we're gonna follow Buckeye celebrity status and it really needs to be repotted. I think you can see pretty clearly how much paler this bottom row of leaves is than all of the rest. And it is blooming beautifully. It is looking like it's going to be very pretty. And the variegation is coming in uh, nicely. So it really needs to be repotted. It needed to be repotted quite a while ago because this one was potted up December 2nd. December 2nd. So first, I'm going to take off this bottom row of pale leaves. And you guys have seen me pot a plant up before, but I thought this would be a good one for us to just really kind of follow in our journey here. So that takes us about here, and I've got a few more here that I think should go. Okay, that's enough for now. So now we have a much smaller plant than we had just a moment ago. And normally I would pot this up into a three inch pot, but I'm gonna take a chance this time and pot this one onto four inches. The next thing we need to do is remove all the blossoms. And the reason we do this is because we want the plant, you know, it's gonna get repotted into a bigger pot and we want it, I want it to expend its energy growing leaves and a good root system rather than trying to bloom. We already know that it blooms true. There's the blossoms, look how pretty they are. But this is what we need to do now. So there's a little bit of water in the saucer because this got a drink this morning. So I'm just gonna do what I normally do. I'm just squeezing this pot and then I'm just gonna tip it a little bit on its side. I'm squeezing it, it's a solo cup, so you can squeeze it all you want. It's very easy to squeeze. And you can take a look at this. Th oh, I just broke a leaf, I think. Maybe not. It's always better to do this when the plant is not wet but everybody needed a, le a, a drink this morning, so I really had to do it. So we're going to, I'm taking out the wick, and you can see there's a lot of roots formed around the old perlite. Getting rid of all the old perlite. 
as well. And then I'm going to use my X-Acto knife. This is kind of hard for me with my left hand. I'm trying to get where you can see it. But I'm just going to cut those leaves off because remember, I, I mean those roots off because I took quite a few leaves off. That means that this plant does not need these roots. It needs to grow new roots. There we go. So there's all the, the roots and stuff that I just took off. All that stuff goes out. I have a little bit of a neck here. And when I was taking the leaves off, there are some little stubs still. So I'm just using my thumbnail just to make sure this leaf did break. Oh, there it goes. It's not the end of the world. And now I'm just going to set it there and wipe my hands off, off camera. And I already have a pot all ready for it right here. I put the I put the name on it already. So now I'm just going to put a wick in here, just like I normally do. And a good let you know, I'm doing this off camera because it's hard to shift. Uh, but you can see here now I've got I've got about this much perlite in the bottom of this pot, and I'm just flipping the wick over so it's laying there, and then I'm just going to put dirt in the bottom. So here I've done that, and now I'm just going to set this right in the middle of the pot. Now. Can you see that it's just kind of resting there? There's a little bit of a neck there, and we're going to cover that. And I'm just kind of gently put it down into the pot. Hang on, and I'll fill it up with dirt, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. And now I have, you know, filled in the dirt so it's stable here in the pot. And then this is my handy dandy squirt bottle, and I'm just going to water it right in. And that's really it. And we'll watch this one in the days to come, weeks to come, I should say, and uh, see how it does. Now, like I said, normally I would have gone to a three inch pot, but this is already a good sized plant and I like, uh, it's going to be a big plant eventually. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip a step. I don't normally do that. So we'll see what happens. All right, okay you guys, I'll be right back. That was helpful to see um, to see Buckeye. It's, it's right here. Buckeye celebrity status. Here it is in its pot. I mean, it's already grown some in the we just in the week. It was very happy to be repotted, and uh, you know, it's it's just I pat them a little like that. You know, get them to lay flat, and uh, it's growing here in the sunroom, and I think it's going to be just fine. Well, and now it's time to take a look at what's on the stands. And I think you're going to see some different things this week. And, uh, well, I'll just let you take a look. Time to take a look at what's on the stands. Here we are in the guest room. And uh, only blueberry sprite is in bloom. And it, it's looking kind of normal again. I'm kind of excited about that. I don't really see any pink any longer in the blossoms so i think you know what was happening with before is done here's chiffon masquerade it's a little turn everybody had a drink yesterday but i think it got warmer here again everyone needs another one today second shelf nothing too exciting going on just growing third shelf same thing here just kind of hanging out, needs a turn. As you'll see in a moment, I did get some work done down on uh, downstairs, but there obviously are still some things that need to be repotted. Let's go take a look in the basement. Well, here we are in the basement, and as you can see, some things, like yesterday's Valentine there, got repotted, 
and hey, I got some work done here. I just took the lid off of this tray. These guys have been here for a week now and uh, they're ready to be out in the open. The tray was the, I had it in the tray that has the vents in it. So they've had some air and they're ready to be out. And as you can see, I've shifted a few things around. Um, made some cuts on some of the leaves a little further. Everything that's left here, I felt needed to stay a little bit longer. In some cases, like this one and this one and our challenge leaf from Kara Lee, because the babies are just so highly variegated still that there's just, there's some green coming up like on this one, but there's just not enough yet. And uh, back there, those are standards mostly also. Um, everything here, I like to see them be a little bit larger before I go any further with them. So I did get some work done, so yay me. Sorry, I turned the dome back on. And then I shifted a few things around over here. I took some things out of here and put them in the bigger dome, or the taller dome, I should say. But you can see that some of these species, leaves that I got from Dr. Jeff Smith, are starting to sprout. I'm very excited about that. And over here, is my leaf of my Petrocosmia carii, and it is also sprouting a baby, so I'm very excited about that. And uh, everything else here just kind of doing its thing. So second shelf, hey, look down here. I put, I did get to repot my Apicia, my precious, and I put it in the really big dome. <laughs> and it's a little, it's kind of just resting here. Now that I've done that, it's gonna wobble around. Um, but this is a very huge dome, and I actually got this dome from Hans Impine years ago. He had it at, at, at council one day on, on the raffle table, and I got it. And it's, it's see, it almost looks like a space dome <laughs> to me. Um, I know that the lights kind of obliterate your ability to really see the plant, uh, but it, it, they just seem to do better in those for me. And then you can see here, everybody just sort of hanging out. Did a little cleanup. Tensi is getting ready to, Radar's Tensi getting ready to bloom again. Um, still need to do some repotting here. Let's go take a look at the strep shelf. Guys, here's the strep shelf, and I apologize, my uh, fixture is flickering, and it probably means that I need either a ballast or something needs to be uh, adjusted on it. But you'll notice that there's a big hole here where uh, Blue Mars used to be, and that's because I took some things down to my work. In fact, if you look over here, you can see my bottle of Windex and you can see the big spot where my baby stand used to be. And I took the baby stand down to my office and I took a few plants down and Blue Mars was one of the ones I took. But here's everybody else. Here's Pol Dale's Polar Berry. Berries here is Heartland's White Gold. Looking good. Here's Salmon Sunset. Really beautiful. And here's Midnight Flame. Nothing going on here, but I did do some uh, some cutting of some of the older leaves like Dr. Jeff Smith showed us um, when we were talking about streps. So I did a little bit of that and uh, things are going great. Let's go upstairs. Well, I just want to show you the baby stand because you're not going to see it at home anymore. I took it to my office. And Blue Mars is here, Columnia Apollo, a piece of my Texas hot chili, which I just repotted this morning and it's a little, um, it's going to be fine by the morning. And then down here, my extra plant of champagne pink and my extra plant of Armageddon. Well, I would tell you that it's a sunny day, except that you can't tell that now because it's night. <laughs> I had a technical difficulty when I went to look at the footage that I shot earlier for um, upstairs here. Um, it didn't, it wasn't all together. I had a, a battery issue. So we're taking another look here <laughs> at the sunroom stand. And you'll see here's Frosty Bubbles. And nothing that I, I have not been able to get it to do anything. 
I do have some blooms uh, coming here on Max Scorching Sun, and everybody had a drink yesterday, but looking a little floppy, I guess they all need another drink. And you'll see I took one of my plants of Champagne Pink downtown with me, and uh, there's Granger's Peach Frost. Everybody else up here looks just fine. And down here on the Gisneria shelf, you'll see that I also took Columnia Apollo with me downtown. And I took, I cleaned up Texas Hot Chili, I repotted it, and I took a piece of it and repotted it separately and took that downtown with me as well. I got my Escananthus Abconicus repotted, did some grooming here on Ma's Old Fashioned, got a little blossom on Jersey Snowflakes, and down here on the bottom shelf, you can see here is Buckeye Celebrity Status. After, um, it's about a week now since I've repotted it, you saw that earlier, and it's looking pretty good. So far, so good. I did put it into a larger pot. I went right from the Solo Cup to the 4-inch pot. That's not something I would normally do, but this is going to be a big plant, so it seemed to take that okay. And I just got to show you Rob's Wagga Wagga because it is just gorgeous, really blooming beautifully. But I still have some work to do on the other standards on this shelf. All right, so now you, we'll go to see the big box violet, but you'll see it during the day, okay? Really not quite sure how, could, how it could be so completely and fully in bloom again. And as you can see, I have not had a chance to repot it. I am f woefully far behind, but I can hopefully at least get that leaf off of there. But, and here's another one that needs to go, but it's just blooming its full head off. Again, it's a stunner. And, you know, I'm going to show you one other thing, and I'm just going to walk on over. You guys haven't seen this corner of the sunroom in a while. But I did pot up this little begonia that I got um, that was gifted to me at uh, when I went to talk to the Windy City Gardeners. And I potted it up. I just used the regular potting mix that I use for my violets, and I potted it the same way. I have no idea if I've done it right. It, it, it sort of seems to be okay. Um, I guess we'll see. I just thought you guys might like to see. I kind of put it in the open conservatory stand. It's in a north window, but it's getting some eastern or eastern light from over on this side. And uh, I guess we'll just see how it does. Okay, that's the look at what's on the stands this week. I'll be right back. I was so excited to take my stand down. I actually drove down to work on Friday. I never drive downtown because it's, it's crazy to drive to work. I, you know, some people drive into the city every day. I don't know how they do it. I take the train every day, but I couldn't take the, you know, the plant stand on the train. So I, I got in the car early and uh, got everything set up down there. And so I have five plants in my office now. And I'm really excited to have them there, and I, I hope they'll do well. I guess we'll see. I've got them on a timer, and I took a bottle of plant water with me, and uh, so cross your fingers, and we'll see how they do. Well, it's time to get the bail money ready, and I'm very happy to share something with you. Things are going to start to pick up again now. The fall shows are going to start happening, and uh, I think you'll enjoy hearing about these. And so if you are near Sacramento, California, um, next week, September, four, it says September 14th and 15th. Now that's a Sunday and Monday, so definitely check in with them. Make sure that, that is, those are the correct days. But Delta Gisnerids and, and uh, African Violet Society is having its annual judged show and sale. And it says from September 14th at 1 p.m. to September 15th at 3 p.m. And it is in Sacramento. And I'll link to that in the show notes for you. And if you're in the area, I encourage you to go. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think that is Barbara Elkins Club up there. And um, I'm sure it's going to be a great show. So, well, it's time to keep moving forward. Guys, I hope you've had a great week, and uh, I really did. It was a good week at work. I, you know, got lots done. I got some potting done, finally. 
and uh, I try to do a little bit every day as much as I can and uh, just to keep going with that it, there's a lot to do and I continue to downsize my collection slowly I think I'm I'm getting close to being under 90 varieties um, very soon that will happen and uh, again I just keep moving forward with that so I hope that your days in the coming week will be filled with all the things you love Thank you for being here. Um, oh, I know, wait, I had one more thing to tell you. Uh, I've had a couple people ask me about iTunes again. I know that the feed is working, so if you are not getting the new episodes, I believe what you need to do is unsubscribe to the podcast and then resubscribe, and everything should then fall in and, and come right into your iPad or wherever you're watching on iTunes. And I meant to tell you that uh, before, and so I'm sorry to kind of stop my moving forward <laughs> to tell you that, but it's really important. So, because I know a lot of you really prefer to watch on iTunes, and so you should be able to get everything that you need now. Um, you may, like I said, you may have to unsubscribe and then resubscribe, but I know the feed is fixed because I've been checking it myself, and, uh, and it, it, it is working finally again. And again, thanks for your patience throughout the months. That was like a month, like two months of trying to get that fixed. So now it really is time to keep moving forward. And I hope that your days to come will be filled with all the things you love. Good growing. I'll see you next time.